Gregory Gallery in New York is pleased to present an exhibition of works by Gunter Gumper. The exhibition marks 25 years of collaboration between Gregory Gallery and the artist. A charismatic painter, Gumpert is widely considered to be among the most interesting figures in post-war and contemporary art of Europe and the United States. This intimate retrospective includes works from private collections. Some of these works had never been shown in the U.S. Most paintings on display were created in Europe between 1946 and 1966. Other works, larger, brighter, and more colorful, belong to his American period, which began in 1967. This exhibition celebrates a journey of the 99-year-old master. The artists felt that there were three distinct directions in which contemporary painting could be taken, object-based, real and surreal, expressive deformation of shape and color, and object-free abstraction. Object-free abstraction allowed direct expression in color and form. As such, it had a special appeal for Gumper. In abstraction, he saw the unique opportunity of formulating a universal language of art. Near the Cliffs of Thiol was painted in 1953. Dedicated to Ruth, the artist's girlfriend at the time, this painting is one of the last works with traceable Paul Klee influence. I am Gregory Venetsky, the founder and director of the Gregory Gallery in New York. I met Günther Gumpert in 1993 in Washington, where I had my gallery at that time. It was a particular painting that attracted my attention in the frame shop. I asked the framer, who is the painter? And he told me, Gunther, an artist who lives in the neighborhood. I called Gunther and we met. It was the beginning of our friendship and I started to represent his works in my gallery in New York. In this exhibition, we will be showing paintings and graphic works from private collections. Most works are from his post-war period, from 1946 to 1966, when he was living and working in Europe. We also incorporated a number of larger paintings from his American period. This mini retrospective exhibition, conceived as a birthday present for the artist, who is turning 99 on April 17, 2018. Born in Germany in 1919, Gumpert developed an interest in art at an early age. His art education in Krefeld and later Wuppertal was interrupted by World War II. During his brief time at school, he drew the nudes and painted naturalistic landscapes and portraits. After returning to his parents' home in Wuppertal in 1945, Gumpert moved to Cologne. The self-portrait on display at the Gregory Gallery is his first post-war painting. It shows the artist as a young man at a crossroads. This self-portrait was painted at a heavily damaged apartment of his cousin in Cologne. I lived first with my parents in, in uh, Wuppertal, and then I went to live with my cousin and her husband in Cologne. They had mm -hmm. a damaged apartment from bombs and so, but near the university. Then he was professor in, in uh, Cologne. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was the first exhibition for modern art. The first Picassos and one was uh, clay in German, uh, expressionist, mm -hmm. and all sorts of stuff. And there was one clay the physiognomy der Trübe, uh, physiognomy the muddy or what you cannot see clear what mm -hmm. is it. And then always I went back to this painting and it touched me unbelievable, I don't know why. Mm -hmm. And uh, that opened 
for me, the whole idea of abstract art, <laughs> not figurative, everything was out and I was changing slowly. So Because slowly, father, you find out yourself what you have to do, what it's working, what's not working. And then came the abstract stuff, which is totally different. Yeah. And that is always a mixture of brain and, and soul. That's, that's a painting. It was in Cologne where Gumpert became exposed to early modern art during the 1947 exhibition From Nolde to Klee. Gumpert was especially impressed by Paul Klee's Physiognomy of the Turbid. This experience became a turning point in his career. Gumpert starts experimenting with abstract forms. He gradually abandons figurative painting for non-representational abstract art. Gumpert's works were exhibited at Gallery Parnas, founded by Rolf Jarling. This gallery became a meeting point for many international artists interested in pushing the boundaries of painting and sculpture. After having participated in several group shows in Cologne's art museums, Gumpert returns to Wuppertal in 1949. And from that moment on, my whole life changed. Then it was, Wuppertal was forgotten. My parents were there, I went back. Uh, Yelling was there, gallery, and so very, very interesting. But not for me. I need open, open, open world. And then I went uh, to Spain and to Morocco and so. And that was my building years, I think. And then I painted seriously. And I did what I wanted to do. That was all. There we talked seriously about art and he was, he knew, uh, 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 his teacher was Bordel, but he knew uh, Rodin and, and that. And it was serious art talks. And, and then I had my exhibition, the first exhibition in Zurich, and then I went to Paris later. And in Paris was the real uh, stuff for my education, art education, if you want to. I knew the painters there. I lived a totally different life. By the mid-1950s, Gumpert had established his own visual vocabulary and developed unique personal style. Gumpert's abstract works are meditative experiments with floating lyrical forms. Colors and the shape, and sometimes I have an idea and start like this. But the idea changed when you're working, and something comes out totally different. But sometimes you have only, you see in the painting what you started, one part or one color, or I don't know, and you like that. Then you start from this point on and compose the whole painting. So that's it. But it changed until the end. Until you make the door, the last uh, thing on the canvas, then it's finished. It takes a long time, my paintings. And you see in the studio, there are paintings, several paintings started. And I work on one most of the time. Then I see, I put it away, and I look, always looking, looking, and looking, and looking. And then, for the moment, I don't know what to do. I leave it away. And then I take it after weeks or so again, and look again. Then I see something, what I have to do. And so it changed slowly. The most ideas come during the work. You work, have an idea, you do this, and you change all the time. You change, you change, you change. 
technically and independently too. And then something comes out totally different what you were uh, <laughs> supposed to do, <laughs> what you had mind to do. And that is interesting. Gumper traveled and lived in Italy, France, Spain, and Switzerland. For a decade, he lived and exhibited in Paris, where he was associated with the Salon des Realities Nouvelles. He won international acclaim, and art historian and critic Denis Chevalier wrote about his work. In the early 1960s, Gumpert frequented Rome. In 1966, Gumpert toured the United States with a solo exhibition. In Washington, D.C., he met Anita von Kahler. She was an American born and raised in Europe. Fluent in four languages, she worked as a correspondent for the news agency France Press. Well-educated, with exceptional taste and deep knowledge of arts and antiques, they were a perfect match for each other. Anita became his muse and lifelong partner. The couple married in Washington, D.C. in 1967 and spent 47 years together until Anita's death in 2013. His quest for unique painterly expression continued during his American period. The paintings became considerably larger in size and more vibrant in color. His canvases demonstrate a dense pictorial organization and complex color structure. Gumpert's works are wonderful windows into the unexplored spaces beyond the visible. Gunter Gumpert has had a long and prolific career. Gumpert's works are found in numerous public museums and private collections. When recently asked whether he would change anything if he had a chance, the artist said, with a smile, No, everything in my life was predestined, like a well-written script. With the exception of the war, I have lived a wonderful life. I have enjoyed my family, experienced being a poor artist, traveled around a lot, seen wonders of the world, met a lot of talented and remarkable people, experienced real love and happiness, and achieved my goals in art and life. A painting was for me my, my life always, and hence the thought that he wrote it also says that uh, I had to paint wherever I was, whatever I did, that was always it.